I dare to lead because I believe a better world can and should exist for you. You have moved your lives and shared me with so many people, and you have done so with patience, grace, and love. Because you have been willing to be a part of this, I have been able to blaze a trail, and I pray will be a catalyst for infinite new pathways. No extra allowances <laughs> or short cards, Jonathan, but I got you. Understand that when we moved to Mississippi, although home, we've been away for a number of years, but my family did not complain. Instead, they prepared themselves and each other to make this incredibly special place home. I share this because my presidency is a package deal and a package sacrifice. You get me and you get all the knaves. And as a matter of fact, you get the McInneses, you get the Paynes, you get the Hunters, you get the McClendons, you get the Cal Mises, the Bournes, and let me tell you, you're welcome. <laughs> to my mom, my aunts, cousins, friends from Mississippi, Texas to the Carolinas, my Matter Lab group, people who supported me even when they didn't understand what I was doing. You trusted me enough to stay by my side and encourage me, and your emotional support kept me close to my faith and purpose all along. I have also been fortunate to have dedicated mentors, like Troy students sitting in that audience, and leaders who prepared me for this exact moment, from my K-12 teachers, many of who are Alkanites, to my Alcorn professors who wouldn't let me get away with anything. And Dr. Stewart didn't let me get away with anything. They pushed me to set a high standard on which I have built my career in education. And last but never least, Dr. George Wright, Although he could not join us today, he provided a message that we will play during the gala, but it is because he took a chance on someone he did not know to become a part of his upper administrative team that I have landed here. Dr. Wright, it is all your fault. And for that, I say thank you. You gave me opportunities, you valued my ideas, and that trust in me led me here. The truth is, I could spend my entire time with you today thanking those who have contributed to my development and success. Not only people who have impacted my life directly, but Alkernites who have set the bar higher and higher, thus setting the stage for this presidency, showing me that through action, that daring to lead was not for the faint at heart, but would change the course of a community, a state, a nation, and I believe ultimately the world. Today, today I will take a privilege that I do not exercise regularly because I was raised that it's not by my words but by my works that you will be remembered. Because this event comes some two years after I was named president, let me share with you who I am and what I am about and what we will accomplish. I am not here by accident. And I am also not here solely because of my own efforts. I dare to lead because the legacy of Alcorn's past has enabled me to envision the promise of our future. My presidency is a symbol of Alcorn's eagerness and energy for excellence and growth in the next 150 years. That's why I am here. It takes courage to break a ceiling. It also requires a willing community who sees that shattered glass as a new floor and not a mess. <laughs> Let's talk about how we got here, how we became a community that dances on shattered glass 
and keeps moving forward. This university grew out of the Morale Act, which provided each state with 30,000 acres of federal land for each member in the congressional delegation. The act which dialed in on opportunities for agriculture and mechanics made it possible for new western states to establish colleges for their citizens. Now, I won't give you a history lesson for too long today, but stick with me. It's critical to name that the new land grant institutions that came out of this 1862 act opened opportunities to thousands of people previously excluded from higher education. As Josephine McCain Posies begins her book, Succeeding Against Great Odds, The History of Alcorn State University, in 1871, upon the recommendation of Governor James Lusk Alcorn, the state of Mississippi purchased the site where Oakland College has stood so that the School for Education of Black Males could be built. The governor desired equity in the state's educational system, equality in the state's educational system, yet he wanted blacks and whites to be kept separate. Now, other black institutions were established in the post-war era. Alcorn, however, was the only fully state-supported college for African Americans to be organized at that time. See, Alcorn was born from a place of progress, restoration, and hope. Founded in 1871, Alcorn is the oldest public, historically black, land-grant institution in the United States. And let me tell you, the first have not stopped coming from those gates. Hiram Revels, our first president, was the first African American to serve in the U.S. Congress and subsequently the first African American appointed to the United States Senate as a Republican to represent Mississippi. Katie G. Dorsett in 1983 was the first African American elected to, Greens to the Greensboro City Council. She was also the first African American female appointed as Secretary of the Department of Administration by North Carolina Governor Jim Hurd, and the first African American female chairman of the City Commission in Gillard, North Carolina. Our university's 19th president, Dr. Alfred Rankins, Jr., was the first African American to have been named commissioner of higher education to oversee Mississippi's eight public universities. And Willie Simmons, a former Mississippi State Senator for more than 26 years, today Commissioner Simmons is the first African American elected to the Mississippi Transportation Commission. <laughs> that list could go on for hours. You see, that progress we were born from that brings new leaders who represent those previously excluded. That restoration we were born from brings new thoughts and ideas to the global table. And that hope we were born from ensures the already incredible list of first and next never stops growing. When Alcorn opened its gates, we celebrated that achievement. Even still, those first students had no idea where we would go, had no idea that they could aspire to the students and alums we have become today. We have continued to and will always level up. That brings us to today. Where are we now? In 2019, the Atlantic published a Q&A making the case for HBCUs. In that article, Wayne Frederick, Howard University's president, said, the question isn't why HBCUs still exist. The issue is really how excellent can we be? How excellent can we be? I have been Alcorn's president for 19 months. This time has both highlighted our areas of excellence and pushed us to raise the bar to become exceptional in other areas. 
Never in a million years did I think we would have endured a global pandemic and its devastating aftermath, vicious racial injustice that highlighted our country's gaping divisions, and most recently, a once-in-a-century ice storm. And do you know what Alcorn has done in this past year? We leveled up. Just a few highlights. We made the transition to virtual classes while maintaining a high standard of academic excellence and through it, a sense of hope and trust in our community. Those consistencies, along with the best team I could ask for, positioned us for an in-person return in the fall of 2020. There are several firsts we are one step closer to receiving our reaffirmation from SACS with zero recommendations. <laughs> and yes, we received our largest single donor grant to date, $25 million from Mackenzie Scott. This year has tested our resilience and response, but more notably, it has proven our commitment to the mission and vision of the university. We are a great institution that outperforms what our re great outperforms the research dollars and operations associated with our name might say. We have the history. We have the drive, and the people need it to be an exceptional and premier institution that leads across the full spectrum of our offerings. And with that, where will we go in the next 150 years? We dare to lead across that chasm. We dream bigger than we thought we could and, became, and become the premier HBCU we were always meant to be. We do that by becoming even more student-centered, forward-focused, innovative, and transformative in the way we equip our students for life's greatest successes. Alumni, we must speak positively about our <laughs> institution. Our curriculum and extracurricular will focus on the whole person, and every brave will leave this campus with a first-class education and an unshakable understanding of the importance and significance of being present, being a person of good character, being forthright, being a leader, but also, when needed, being a follower. Remembering we will only have sustainable success if we bring others along. Hear me when I say this. There is enough room for everyone. We all have different God-given talents. True leaders work together without competitive intent. They strive for excellence that benefits all. And let's not forget, I am an engineer, so we're going to get really technical to ensure this all happens. We, we will make sure we're still, we're financially sound and self-sustaining. In addition to what the state provides, and I'm thankful for what the state provides, we will develop sustainable programs that add revenue. We will, and it bears repeating, lean on our past to elevate our future. We will dare to lead in our agricultural programming while strengthening our STEM. We will dare to lead in academic excellence while strengthening our social emotional response. We will dare to lead in athletics while strengthening our arts. We will be consistent. We will be purposeful. We will be exceptional. But most of all, we will be all corn.
strong leadership, and by strong, I mean collaborative, effective leadership that is not boastful, this is the type of leadership that has always been synonymous with Alcorn. Our university's first president, Hiram Revels, 23 years later, we were led by Levi Rowan when he became the first alumnus to serve as president of his alma mater. In his second stint as Alcorn's president, he presided over the most ambitious expansion of facilities and student body growth in Alcorn's early history. 60 years later, we were led by Walter Washington. Now, 25 years after that, I have broken the gender barrier, and I, bes and I am beside myself to have my name and leadership associated with this great university, a university I am both personally and professionally invested in. For as much as I am like the previous presidents, I'm different. I do things through the lens of a different experience. I know this is exactly what Alcorn needs in this moment and this momentous phase. Some of my earliest childhood memories are on this campus with my Uncle Lawrence and Aunt Helen running around, spending time on the yard, in the gym, at the YSB program. Alcorn State felt like home to me long before I enrolled my, in my first freshman class. Then during my four years as a Brave, I learned so much more than what you can find between the pages of a book, namely confidence and identity. I gained here, what I gained here has carried me in every step of my personal and professional life. Confidence in myself, confidence in what's possible, confidence the path laid for me was only a starting point, and should I choose to, I could return to that starting point into a legacy. Identity. HBCUs give students, specifically black students, the opportunity to discover and celebrate their identity without the burden of justifying their identity to the rest of the world. That is what Alcorn did for me. It allowed me the space and the support I needed to identify with all the things I would grow to become. A black woman in STEM, a woman in a male-dominated field, a mother, a wife, a leader, and your first female president. So as I conclude, and thank you to the delegation, Senator Briggs, Mayor Flags from Vicksburg, 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 <laughs> Mayor Gibson from Natchez, 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 <laughs> and any other representatives that are here today, thank you for being with us to celebrate this joyous occasion, and all my colleagues from the other Mississippi institutions of higher learning, the 1890s and 1862 Commissioner, uh, Commissioner McClellan from the SWAC, Dr. Williams from Nesby, thank you all. Dr. Walters from Tougaloo, thank you for your support. As I go to my seat, Alcorn, I assure you, Every day, in every action, I will dare to lead. I will always fight the good fight, not the popular fight, but the right fight. Here's to the next 150 years of shattered glass, academic excellence, purposeful impact, and lifelong membership into the Alcorn family. Thank you, and God bless.